Bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today we are discussing the satanic trap of spiritual warfare praying. My friends, I've already done a video a while back on the false movement of I decree and I declare. And if you have not seen that video, you would do well if you're new on the channel to go through my channel and find that exhortation. But my friends, I want to warn some of us and I want some of us to consider these facts. Prayer simply means we are having a conversation with God. Now, we know that there are times where we are being pressed on every side when we have to really engage our spirit and our mind, our soul, our everything to focus, to rebuke feelings and, and, and different things that is happening, not so much on the outside, but on the inside of our spirit. And this is where, my friends, I need you to follow me very closely. Because once your foot gets in a trap, friends, it can be hard to get out. We must understand that there are teachings of devils. The Bible said that in the latter day, many would be moved and swept away by what? seducing spirits and and we can have a good thing totally corrupted if we do not have ears to hear our great shepherd Jesus Christ as we are journeying through life we need to hear clearly what he is saying or we could be trapped listen my friends Ephesians chapter 5 tells us let no one deceive you with empty words. And oftentimes, uh, the writer, in, in which it was Paul to the church of Ephesus, if he is telling us, don't let nobody deceive you, that means you can be deceived. We need to understand in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, one of the most powerful uh, um, things that Jesus has said to us. He said it to his disciples then, but now that we have repented and turned from our sin, we are Christ's followers. And this is what he said. He said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. This is clear, my friends, that Jesus Christ must become Lord over your life over my life. Lord means I own you. You are my disciple. This is what Jesus is letting us know that I got the power. And if you will follow me, if you will trust me, but see, it is very difficult, my friends, to wage war in the spirit. Because see, what we're trying to protect is the spirit the conscience where where peace and joy can emanate in and through us regardless of where we are or what is going on in our lives we can still sleep in the midst of the storm when the storm was brewing the disciples was getting all frantic but what was Jesus doing he was sleep he was not binding and rebuking and devil this and devil. He was asleep. They were frantic. And Jesus wants us to understand that when we are going through test trials and tribulations, and friends, your, your faith is going to be tested. Jesus wants us to stay close to him and trust him. Because if you get into, first of all, let me be very clear, because it's hard to, to wage war and bring your flesh into sub subjection. If you, my friend, if you're living a dirty life and you are not clean, if you are living in sin, if you are dibbling and dabbling and playing around, when you need comfort, when you need the Holy Spirit, when you need that peace be still from within, you won't be able to find rest because why? You're an enemy. Look, you can't drink from the cup of the devil and the cup of the Lord. 
And then when you're in trouble, you 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 can't get help because you have you have grieved the Holy Ghost. So so let's understand, friends. What I want to give you in the dangerous uh, movement of all this spiritual warfare, you have a lot of people. You're living in sin, friends. This is not a game. You can't play with this thing. But the the number one reason we got to be careful of all this devil and devil and devil and devil this and devil that is because if you're not submitted to Jesus, it could move you away from the truth. And the truth is the Christ. And Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you. And he went on to say other things, but most notably, Jesus said, apart from me, you can't do anything. You can't wage war on that flesh. You cannot handle the enemies from without if you do not abide in the truth. Because watch me, friend, without truth, there is no rest. See, this is a double-edged weapon that the Bible is referred to as a double-edged sword. You cannot wage war without Jesus and knowing him. You can't find rest because the greatest weapon for the believer is not binding and loosening devil and you going on for, 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 for hours rebuking and no. The greatest spiritual weapon that many of us cannot wield is rest. That I'm, I'm, I'm out. This battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. He is Lord over me. I'm abiding in him. Jesus is the truth. He's the way and he is the life. And friends, when you start getting into all of this, trying to take authority over everything, let me tell you what happens. You drop your weapon. You move away from Christ, you move away from rest, and you enter, number one, paranoia. There are so many people who are swept away in this spiritual praying and warfare movement, they have nothing but paranoia. Everything is the devil, the devil, the devil. My friend, you can't find rest because the scriptures tell us God keep in perfect peace the mind that stayed on him, not our adversary. So now your paranoia, your your para, your paranoid and you can't find rest for the soul. You can't find rest. You're always fighting. And listen and hear me and understand, my friend, the body, the natural body. We are the body of Christ. Your natural body cannot rejuvenate and, and, and become healthy if it never rests. It's disease and, re and, and, and the rejuvenation of cells. There's so much going on when we are asleep. And so when you don't have spiritual rest for the soul, because everything's I bind and loose and all of this foolishness, no. You got to learn to, to wield the weapon of truth that if God does not move this thing, if he does not get me out of this situation, I'm not going to get out. So I'm going to rest in him. Number two, first thing that will happen if you get swept away in this warfare praying where you won't rest, you won't trust the Lord. Paranoia and pride. Pride, usually, my friend, if you're not careful, you, you, you're you trying to control your life. He's not Lord. You don't even trust him as Lord. Your heart becomes dark. And usually you will find with people who are constantly waging war on the enemy, you're going to find the spirit of anger. Because when you don't see that situation moving and you're you're applying all the principles that man has taught you, really the enemy, because he knows if we don't rest, friends, we cannot find what we really need. And that's the voice of the commander. We need to hear Jesus' voice. And if you're all riled up constantly looking for the devil, binding and none, you can't hear his voice because the spirit is not at rest. Because the soul is not. Because the soul is trying to maintain control. Number two, so you got paranoia, pride. And the most important thing I'm trying to tell you, you remove yourself from Christ's lordship. 
You don't trust him. And, and what drives us oftentimes to move away from resting and, and, and moving towards worship and thanksgiving and praise and just thanking Jesus, thanking him for our salvation, thanking God the Father for receiving us through Jesus Christ, talking to God as our heavenly father. Friends, when you feel that you are entitled to the things of this world, you can't give God praise and thanksgiving. Your heart is never content. You are a restless soul. And this is where the enemy will bait you to, to get you frantically trying to take control of your life. And you will lose in that fight. The word of the Lord in the exhortation for us today, stand down soldiers and go and worship the true and the living God who we regard as our heavenly father. The Bible says when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, he shall bear witness that you are a child of God by which we call him Abba, rendering father. He is our heavenly father. And Jesus, when he went before Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate wanted, wanted Jesus to answer him. Jesus was not answering him. And, and when Jesus finally spoke, he said, the only power that you have on this day is only what has been given to you by my father. And friends, it takes great strength and humility to bow our hearts and our head and say, be it unto me, God, according to your will. I will trust you. And, and let me tell you, my friends, so what am I saying? We got to stand down. You petition God, and sometimes you do have to, you, you got to war and tell them thoughts, get out of my head. That ain't God. I rebuke that thought. Get out of here. And you worship you stay in an attitude of gratitude. And we must remember, my friends, the race is not given to the swift or to the strong. It is given to those who will and can and shall endure. And a racehorse is only as valuable as its uh, uh, willingness to obey the rider. See, see, God wants to ride, if you will. But if you are trying to jump out of every situation, binding and loosening and just sending yourself in a spiritual frenzy, instead of bowing that heart and that head and say, God, be it unto me according to your will. I will trust you. Oh, friends, the greatest weapon is rest. I'm taking my hands off of this situation and I'm going to worship you, God. I'm not going to be afraid of the evil one. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be afraid of destruction, lack, whatever is your will. I bow my heart and my head and I will worship you. He or she that has an ear. Let them hear Matthew 2.28, 2.18. All power and authorities, principalities are submitted to Jesus Christ. We do not serve Satan. We do not worship him. So when we're in trouble, friends... We go to the rock, the rock of ages. We go to the one that walked in the earth and did not sin, born of a virgin womb. We go to him and we ask the spirit of the living Christ to have mercy. That he stands in the gap. The Bible says Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the father interceding for you and I so we can ask our master have mercy on me 
Give me the strength to move through this season, this time, and this testing of my faith. Because Jesus prayed for Peter. Rest assured, beloved, he is praying for you. That your faith does not fail you. Now get your worship. Get that song. Come on, lift up that weapon. And give God some thanksgiving. I don't care if you're homeless and you're sleeping in your car. Thank him for the car. Thank him that it's a, 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 a Walmart nearest you that you could go in and wash up and fix up. And then a public library near you too. So you can get online and check those applications. That's right. Come on. And whatsoever state we find ourselves, soldiers, we will stand at attention to our Lord and Savior. And we will stand at attention to our Heavenly Father and, and tell them, thank you. Thank you for my salvation. No matter what I'm going through right now, God, come on, you got to tell them. Thank you for saving my wretched soul. And for that, and that alone, I shall stand at attention. And I will forever give you praise. God bless you, my friends. Don't be swept away in a frenzy. Fighting devils. No. Rest. Pick up your weapon and rest. God bless you, my friends. He or she that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of Christ just said to us. God bless you.